back, you guys, to Choking Hazard. My name is Zach, and have you guys watched The Promised Neverland? The first season of The Promised Neverland is one of the best animes I've watched in a long time. In a long, long, long time. It has great characters, it has great writing, great pacing, a great villain. I mean, it is great all the way around. I don't, I don't want to spoil anything in it, so if you haven't seen it, Go watch it right now. It is on Netflix, it's on Crunchyroll, it's on Funimation. My, you know what's really funny is that I actually didn't know there was a season two coming out for this show at all. My wife had to tell me, and when she told me, my first reaction wasn't, great, there's a new season to one of my favorite shows. The first thing that I thought was, why are they making a second season to A Promised Neverland? The season one to A Promised Neverland was amazing, it's just that the show's plot was kind of already fulfilled. There was really nothing else to really gain from making a second season because obviously you guys know this is a spoiler alert and everything like that. So if you haven't watched season one, go watch it now. But if you don't like, if you don't give a shit about spoilers, just, you know, you're welcome. Basically, these kids are on a farm. They are cattle and they get eaten by demons. They find out once they go and try to give a teddy bear back to one of their friends that is getting adopted and they find out that demons eat them. And then the whole gist of season one is just trying to figure out how to get off of this plantation slash farm that is hurting them to to the slaughter, basically. So it, it's a really interesting story. The the mom, which is, she's called Mother, she's the, the homeowner or whatever, the person that looks after the kids, looks after, you know, for their best interests. She's such a good villain because she's sly, cunning. She's not, like, overly aggressive in any way. She's just smart and calculating on how she's supposed to get these children in a line, you know, get the, get the ducks in a row. So that, that's what's so cool about it. They just have to get off. That's, that's the gist of it. So once they actually break free in Season 1 and they get out, get out of the, uh, the farm, I was saying, like, what, like what's going to be the next season you know what I mean like there's gonna have to be a completely different plot right so it's gonna be a completely different show so if you like season one you might not like season two at all because the plot has to be completely different the funny thing is, is they actually don't really change up the the general gist of the storyline or I, I wouldn't call it a plot but like the general gist of the storyline is basically the same thing instead of breaking out of the farm which is what they originally did this time we have to raise the stakes and make it 10 times, 20, 80 times bigger. They have to kind of, like, escape from the continent. Now, I'm going to give you a spoiler here. It's a light spoiler because it happens in episode two. Basically, what happens is they find out some information about the world. So, number one, they're giving up information about the world that was, like, shrouded in mystery before. So, it kind of takes away some of the, the interesting aspect of the world of, uh, you know, not knowing much about it. Um... They, they, they say that half the planet is owned by humans and half the planet is owned by demons. And they have kind of like a mutual agreement with each other to like not mess with each other's business. So the children are actually on the demon side trying to escape to the other side where the humans are located. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the, just the show. It's basically escape from the environment, but this time instead of being on a farm where they're curtailed and like really condensed in a small area where they kind of have to hide in plain sight because people are spying on them and trying to make sure that they're they're not going to escape and stuff like that, kind of like Big Brother's watching over them. This time it's more of like survival escape, um, where it, it kind of like, um, it, it straight up becomes kind of like a fantasy, where it's like they have to just make it through the forest without dying from monsters. That's kind of that's the gist of the storyline now. And then make it across to the good guy zone. That's it. It's Left 4 Dead, you guys. Have you played Left 4 Dead? It's Left 4 Dead. <laughs> so, before writing this review, I actually was trying to think, I was like, well, the storylines are kind of the same, in the sense they're both trying to escape from, like, a particular area and get to, like, the safe zone, but what, what makes it, like, better and worse, you know? And, <laughs> really, the reason it is is just writing. The, the writing in Season 2 is just god-awful. There's actually almost no plot to it. There's a storyline, but there's almost no plot. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and quote Hemingway here when it comes to the plot versus storyline. Hemingway has this kind of interesting thing where he describes storyline as basically just statements of fact. Like, I ate bread. Just a statement of fact. That's what a storyline is. It's just kind of telling you what happened. A plot is why things are happening. 
that's the difference. So Hemingway actually has kind of a cool quote here, and it is the famous six-word story. Okay, and it says, For sale, baby shoes never worn. Why are they for sale? Because the baby never wore them. So you, that, that could be said. You see what I'm saying? Now, just saying that the shoes were never worn, that's kind of a statement of fact. Why were they never worn? Because the baby never got to wear them. See what I'm saying? And, and, and that, that's where it comes, that, there's that intrigue there. You're like, what happened to the baby sort of deal. That's the plot. It makes, you, it makes the audience, right, want to like know more. You know what I mean? You're just like, the baby, what happened to the baby? Did the baby die? Did, did the baby, did, did you just never got to wear the shoes? I don't know. I want to know more because that could be really, you know, that could be scary, you know, or, uh, or sad or something like that. It's, it's supposed to suck the, the reader in. And in season two of A Promise Neverland is almost like all storyline, no plot. There's no plot. There's no like intrigue. It's just kind of like, <laughs> I, without spoiling anything, each episode can be summed up in like a couple sentences. Uh, like first episode, kids get saved by a person. Person tells them the world, and then they leave the safe house. There, they get to another safe house. Demons attack. They have to escape that safe house, and then go further that way. There's there's no real like real intrigue between the characters and what's actually happening. It's kind of just events occurring, and you just watching events play out. Plot is about cause and effect of choices specifically characters choices you know you want to see what happens if they make the wrong choice at the wrong time the thing is there's not really any choices to really be made in season two it's kind of just you're watching like a gigantically long chase scene is kind of the gist of what's going on now there there is one particular part um on episode five where you get to see a particular person and i'm sure if you've already watched the first season you probably know who that is and I haven't seen the last episodes. But after five episodes, you guys, five episodes, okay? It's a lot of episodes for me to, like, not give a shit about any of them. There, there was almost not a single ounce of, like, intrigue through the entire, the entire five episodes. And that right there is a super-duper red flag when it comes to me watching a season of a other, like... The, the, the season one of A Promise Neverland hooked me so damn quick in episode one. The hook there was like, just hook, line, and sinker, throw me away. I'm, I was ready to keep watching the show. I want to know what happened. This one, you could play out, if it plays out the same way for the next seven episodes where they're just running and running and running and running and running, and they, oh, they get the next area and they run and they have to escape and they run, they're just running. And there's no choices, there's no character development, there's nothing. It's just go from point A to point B, it's left for dead. And, and that's the thing is that that's why I think season one is so, or season one, season two of A Promise in Everland is just trash, absolute dog shit, garbage trash. It is just, it, it's so bad. It's, it's one of, the, it, it's so bad because I, I love the first season so much and, um, and the show was so good and it, 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 su it sucks to see like a show decline because of bad writing, and, and to be honest with you, I, I don't know what to say, because I haven't read the manga, I know there's probably a manga out there that might be even better than what's going on right here, I, I, I don't care about that. Season 1 was its own confined story that really didn't need to have anything else towards it, it really didn't, it didn't need anything, it was it was ni nicely uh, tied up in a bow, it's packaged, it's right there, it is perfect. You didn't need to add anything else, and it almost feels like the season two is just an awful cash grab. Now, I can't make this like an official review because I haven't seen the whole season yet. I'll probably watch the rest, obviously. It's just that right now, you guys, I want to tell you that this season might really suck. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say to you guys. It, it, see, the season two is just has been killing me. I, I don't want to watch any more of it. it. It's it's ruining the first season for me. You know what I mean? It's almost like it's tainting how fucking perfect the first season was. And it's it's just I might have to just erase it from my brain. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and see you guys.
Hey, you made it to the end. That means you must enjoy my content, so go ahead and love tap that subscribe button for me. And if you don't like my content, subscribe anyways. My videos are proven to make your schlong longer. Follow me on Parlor if you want additional content updates or if you want to interact with me personally. And join my BitChute channel for additional content. Thanks, you guys. See you. <laughs>